kid zone. Last week we learned about Paul and Silas and they were singing in a prison. It was dark and scary, but God was with them and he did amazing things. This week we're gonna know, learn another story about Paul, but first let's sing together. Well, now we're gonna hop into our story. And if we haven't gotten the chance to meet before, my name is Joe, and this is my niece. What's your name? Soleil, and I'm seven years old. And Soleil, answer me this question. What is one game that you like playing while you're at home during this time? I like playing life. You like playing the game of life. I love it. Uh, well, what, I, what I've liked doing so far is, uh, I've liked doing puzzles with Auntie Rachel. It's pretty fun. But uh, can, we're going to talk about a story today. But before we hop in, let me ask you, have you ever uh, been really nervous when you met someone new? Or maybe even a little scared? Yeah, because you don't really know who they are yet. Yeah, and maybe deep down inside, you don't know if they're going to like you, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what ha have you ever met someone that may be a little bit different than you? Maybe, maybe they eat different food. Maybe, uh, maybe they go to bed at a different time. Maybe they watch different shows. Maybe even they, they kind of have a different personality. Have you ever met that kind of person? Yeah. How does that make you feel when you met someone who is a little different? It, does, it makes me feel happy because God makes everybody different and that's what makes Amen. And see, that's what we're going to talk about today is that God made everyone different and that means that we're all made awesome. But sometimes throughout history and even in the Bible, people had met other people who were a little bit different and they didn't think it was awesome. As a matter of fact, they thought 
God didn't love the people who were different. And so we're gonna talk about that story today. And we're hopefully, for everyone at home, you would come to the place that even when I meet someone who's different, oh, God made them and they're awesome, even though they're different. And actually, God loves them and wants to know them too. And one more thing is that when we are kind and generous and loving to people, even when they're different, we actually show them God's love. Did you know that? So we're gonna talk about that today. But before I do, Sove, have you ever read the book, uh, the Dr. Seuss book about the star belly sneetches? No. No, it's a really, really old book. It was, it was made long before any of us were born. A long, long time ago. But um, I wanted to talk about it a little bit today because I think it will help us understand more about the story we're gonna talk about. And so, so they, the star belly sneetches were a, a creatures and there were two kinds of star belly sneetches, okay? There were the star belly sneetches that were the cool star belly sneetches in this society. And um, Dr. Seuss's art looked a lot better than mine, but they had stars on their bellies. They had cool stars. And because of that, they looked happy. They got to live happy, everyone liked them. Uh, it was pretty cool. And so would you be someone who would want a star on your belly? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'd want a star on my belly. But there were people, the other kinds of people in the society were sneetches, but they did not have stars on their bellies. And you know what was sad? Is that people made them feel sad because they had no stars on their bellies. And so they were left out. Have you ever been left out, like on the playground or for a game? Yeah. How did that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel like that some people don't like me or some people, some, I just, I felt really sad because people, because I don't want, because people are, leaving other people out. Totally. That's not right. So the big deal is that the Starbelly Sneetches were sad. They were sad. They were sad because they were getting left out of all the games and activities. And throughout the rest of the book, Dr. Seuss is trying to demonstrate that a person is a person no matter what, no matter what differences they have, they're worthy of love. And that's the story we're gonna look at in the Bible today. It's very similar to this story. And actually, I think Dr. Seuss was influenced by this story that we're gonna look at. So, so if they like the star belly sneetches, and for all of us at home, I think the Bible has a very, very similar story. As a matter of fact, I think Dr. Seuss was influenced by this story. But in the story, we have Paul, which we've been talking about over the last few weeks. And let me tell you a little bit about Paul Sobe, uh, just to recap. Paul was a guy who, who was known as a, a Jewish Pharisee. He, was, he really followed God with all of his heart. And the thing is, is he didn't actually like people who followed Jesus. He bullied them, he harassed them. And many of us have heard this story, but uh, he actually was so mean to them that they ended up scattering throughout the whole, whole world because they weren't allowed to live in their homes because of Paul. And then one day, Paul was chasing after them and Jesus showed up and Jesus called out to him and, and, and Jesus called to him and said, hey, I love you and I love all the people in the world and I want you to follow me, not be mean to them, right? And so then Paul, after hearing that message, decides I'm gonna go throughout the whole world and, hear, and, and tell people about the love of Jesus. And he ends up, as he's going throughout the whole world, encountering people who are very different than him. And what do you think Paul did once he encountered those people? He let, he made, he kind of made fun of them. And he didn't think of that. He thought that Jesus didn't love him. That's the crazy thing is you would think that would happen because the way he started out his life, he was really mean to people who were different than him. But the thing is, is Paul didn't do that, Sove. Do you know what he did instead? He went and he was like, Jesus loved me so much, I'm gonna go tell other people that Jesus loves them even the people who were different. And so Paul went out throughout the whole world telling people, Jesus loves you. And no matter, what, no matter what they looked like or what language they spoke or what food they ate or whatever, Paul was telling them, Jesus loves you and wants a relationship with you. And even more than that, which is really cool, he said, I love you. That's this really cool thing that the guy who was up here being mean to people and bullying people, Jesus had changed and he got Jesus' heart to love everyone regardless of what they're like. 
So Paul ended up being the exact opposite of the guy he was before. Jesus had changed his life so much that he even went to the people who were different than him and told them about Jesus' love. But when word so they started getting out that people who were different were starting to believe in Jesus and their lives were being changed, the people back at home where Paul was in a place called Jerusalem, they were getting very angry. And they were saying, no, only people like us can follow Jesus. Only people, they have to be like us. They have to act like us. They have to follow our customs and our laws. If they wanna follow Jesus, they need to be like us. What, what do you think about that, Sove? Is that good or bad? That's bad. Why? Because God doesn't want everybody to be the same. Exactly, like you said earlier, we're different and God made us that way, so that's awesome, right? Exactly. So Paul ends up hearing this and ends up going back to his home with his buddy Barnabas. And they end up standing up to all of the church leaders in Jerusalem. And they end up saying, hey guys, we're seeing Jesus change people's lives and they don't need to be like us. Jesus wants a relationship with them too. And so we need to get out of the way and instead love them and accept them because when we love them, we're showing them that Jesus loves them and died for them. And so uh, when Paul and Barnabas go and give this message, you know what's crazy? They do it in front of hundreds and hundreds of people. Do you know what happens? <laughs> A the guy named James, who's the leader of the church in Jerusalem, back where all the angry people are, he stands up and he says this really cool line. After this, God will restore the Jewish people. It's and, and listen to what he says after this, that the rest of mankind, in Acts 15, verse 17, that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even the Gentiles who bear my name. The Lord is going to do these things. And what James is essentially saying here, Jewish people were the people that, that thought, oh, we're God's chosen people. The Gentiles were anyone who was not Jewish, so all these people. James here is saying, God's called us so that way we could be a light to all those people who are not like us, so that way they can follow Jesus. And so when James stands up, what ends up happening is it causes this movement where the, the word about Jesus and his love spreads throughout the whole world. Isn't that crazy? And you and I get to hear about Jesus today because Paul stood up and said even people who are different can hear about the love of Jesus. And everyone at home, we get to hear about Jesus because Paul stood up and said even people who are different can know and love Jesus. Jesus died for all of us, regardless of where we come from. So in light of that, Sove, how do you feel about people who are different? What does Paul's story teach us? I think people who are different, I don't think anybody should be people who are different. Definitely not. And what do you think we should be like to people who are different? We should be kind mm -hmm. and we should, we, we should respect that they're different. Yeah, but even more than that, Sove, when we love them, do you know what happens when we're kind and when we love them? What does that show those people that are different? That Jesus loves them. Exactly. So when we're kind, when we're, when we're courteous, when we're gentle, when we're inviting, when we, when we open up our games and our activities to even people who we wouldn't normally hang out with, we show people that Jesus loves them. And guess what? Jesus did the same thing for us. Because when we were sinners, when we weren't like God, he still loved us enough to die for us. When we were different, Jesus died for us. So when other people are different, we get to love them. So I want to encourage all of us at home, we all have neighbors in our neighborhood who we may not normally hang out with. We have people uh, maybe uh, in our, even in our houses, maybe our brothers and sisters may act a little different than us. Uh, and it's easy to be mean to people who are different. That's the easy thing. But to remember Jesus died for them. I get to show them love. Maybe invite them to play a game with you. Maybe write them a nice card. You like to write, you like to draw pictures for people, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a fun way to show someone that you think about them and that you care about them. Uh, maybe for some of us, it's easy as baking cookies and dropping them off uh, at, at, on someone's porch saying, hey, I just want to let you know you're loved. But when we do that, Sylvie, we show other people that Jesus loves them and that he died for them and he wants to be their friend too. So Sylvie, in light of that, would you like to pray for us? Yeah. Okay, thank you, my friend. Dear Lord, thank you for making everybody different. 
I don't think anybody should treat anybody different because everybody is beautiful in their own way. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. This is the Backwards Action Challenge. Everything you do has to be done backwards. You can try this at home. Hit that reverse button. Backwards too? Reverse, reverse! Everybody clap your hands! It was so great to hear from Joe and Sobey about how when we love others, we're showing God's love. Now I want you to see some moves from my friends, the Long Boys. Heads up! <laughs>